Welcome everybody to a Recovery Machine. I'm Nathan, joined as always by my co-host Corey. How are you doing, Corey? Hey Nathan, I'm pretty good. It's Friday afternoon, I believe. A little bit congested, a little bit tired, mm. but looking forward to chatting with you about a couple of things and uh, kind of getting back to it for the new year, but we're both feeling a little bit rough. There's a lot of bugs going around right now. There is. Yeah. And, uh, I am, uh, I was, I had a pretty busy day and, uh, had a long drive involved in there too, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's good to kind of get set up here again and, uh, look at some of the news articles and kind of take a look at some things we haven't looked at before. And, um, yeah, maybe talk a little bit of, I don't know what you call it. Um, drug related or drug policy related philosophy, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but we'll see how far we get, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, we wanted to start with, uh, something that you had, uh, you had mentioned, was it last night or a couple of days ago? Yeah. A couple of days ago, this came up in my, actually it was my credit to my sister, Kate, for, for passing this on to me, uh, credit where it is due. It's the, uh, the connect app. Okay. Um, the this is a app that was put forward um, by the it sounds like it was a collaboration between the uh, provincial government, the minister Ministry of Mental Health and Addictions, um, provincial health services agency, and um, I was going to say BC Ambulance Service or e, you know provincial EHS. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a a collaboration that is that has gone down um, to make this app for drug users. It's sort of a um, one stop, one stop shop for services, and also for some potential life saving um, features in there as well. So, right, yeah, I, I I downloaded it to take a look, and I noticed there's quite a few different things going on in there. It's a, I guess, a an app that was designed in BC in part by Lifeguard Digital Health, and then uh, the other services you mentioned there. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, can you explain to people kind of the basics of how, how it works? Cause there's a few of these apps out here, but I think this one is sort of for BC, right? It's for BC. Um, it's very straightforward. First of all, we are not, this is not a, uh, a funded or sponsored, uh, conversation we're having. It's just in the news and it applies to the whole, um, harm, re harm reduction conversation in our province. Um, <clears throat> so the app is pretty straightforward. It features a couple of like one touch resources. If you are in a, in a crisis or need to have a conversation about your mental health, um, there's a suicide hotline, like one touch and it connects you to the suicide hotline. Um, and then also has some, some information about where to find naloxone, um, where to find counseling resources, um, where to find other addiction and mental health supports in your area. You can, you know, search by area within the province. And then, Probably the most um, <clears throat> the most life saving or important feature of the app is the the use alone timer. So, yeah. were you first? Were you familiar with that term before the, seeing this app, Nathan? The use alone timer. No, I I, I didn't know anything about it, and uh, it's I mean it's a clever idea for sure. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you alert the app that you're going to be using alone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you take a dose of, uh, whatever your drug of choice is. And then I think a timer starts. Um, so you have 50 seconds, I believe it is with this one to, uh, before an alarm goes off and that gets increasingly louder, uh, until I think the 75 second mark. And if you haven't acknowledged the app by that time, then it automatically places a text to voice call to 911. Mm -hmm. And, so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, go ahead. It's, it's a good idea, right? I mean, uh, whoever came up with that, it's a, uh, it, it's a very straightforward way of potentially saving some lives. And it looks like it has saved some lives. Uh, I got, uh, I just quickly looked online there and it said, uh, since May, 2022, it's been credited with 45 lives saved. Just this little, this particular app here. So, yeah, that's significant. And <clears throat> if you think about it, how, you know, what would be more interesting and more significant is just how many people are actually um, having close calls or maybe they, they 
or just being maybe more aware of of how they they practice their drug use in, in terms of like how they feel immediately after or maybe they it's kind of giving them a nudge to not be alone mm-hmm. um, and changing some of the the behavior there so there is the there to me the 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 question is like depending on your your method of delivery um it'll have a different different speed of onset the action of the of the drug right so you can extend that timer if you're feeling okay or you th- you're maybe you're wondering if you're feeling okay you can extend it for i think another minute and and it will it will continue on before ambulance is called yeah yeah i mean it, it just looking at it uh, i mean there is there's a whole i don't know i think i i saw maybe just on the on the google play site there looked like there's maybe eight or 10 of these that are that are being used actively around the world under different names yeah. um but they all seem to be designed with iv use in mind which is you know i mean it, it would be very difficult to use i think if it was in the case of somebody who's maybe using something like hydromorph recreationally only they're doing it either intranasally or um orally mm-hmm. and there's i mean i've been witness to an overdose when it was a person who was using it for a migraine and just was too they were also taking benzodiazepines and it ended up being a situation where they lost track of their dose in that case obviously a timer is not going to really help i mean mm-hmm. the th- yeah i i think most of these are designed with uh probably uh your most uh fentanyl would be the the target that they're yeah. focused on and iv fentanyl would be the the route yeah absolutely um you know there's also instructions on here for cpr um there's instructions on here for naloxone mm-hmm. there's some you know quick sort of reference guide of do's and don'ts if you encounter someone so it's a it's a a cool idea for family members or people who are living with individuals who who use fentanyl or or any kind of um opioid recreationally family members roommates that kind of thing um yeah it might even be you know i, I was uh i was talking with somebody just a couple of days ago about how many high profile uh opiate overdose deaths have been um it, it been these people that it, it was really shocking to the community and nobody knew that this individual had a uh chronic opioid uh habit yeah Yeah. not even their family you know and uh i've been seeing that i mean i remember the first one there was a i'm not going to say who but it was a high profile um uh guy in in camlips there that was a real shock to the community because he just was a uh he's a a a really a prominent figure and and well liked and he you know he suit and tie every day type of guy and uh he was you know this was early on in the uh, i think around 2017 2016 or whatever but um his family was shocked but this had been you know, you know once they figured out what was going on it had been going on for quite a while and i you know obviously because of uh you know especially if you've got a high profile job it's in your best interest to keep that under wraps and mm-hmm. unfortunately that of course puts you at risk so maybe the thing is everybody should be a little more aware um like i ever since i had that experience where uh, i i just about lost a friend um and thank god the the ambulance was there uh, able to get there in time but now i always have a naloxone kit wherever i you know i i keep it at home and i try and bring it with me too but i would encourage everybody at this point to you know try and at least have a kit at home you know, you don't know, like it could be you're having company over and all of a sudden you've got somebody who's, Mm -hmm. you know, know the signs too, because I, um, like, are you familiar with the term death rattle? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That is a, a very strange sound, a gurgling sound that people make when they're starting to basically the respiratory system is shutting down and you'll know it when you hear it, but it's, I had even been exposed to, um, I, I, I believe we watched some sort of video on it uh, back in uh, university, and it still took me like at least a minute. I was like, 
it triggered something in me, but I was like, what is that? And cause, uh, this person was a couple of rooms over for, from where I was and I couldn't, I, I it sounded weird, but it didn't trigger anything. And then finally, after about a minute, it snapped and I was like, holy shit, that's a death rattle. And I run out there and, you know, blue mm-hmm. lips and everything. Right. Um, <clears throat> so just, you know, th- the fact that this app has that kind of information on there, what to look out for, um, but those type of things, I think we're at the point here where, uh, you know, we've lost enough people and everybody is fairly aware that it's not just the stereotypical, you know, person on the street that people like to like to kind of keep that in. A, that's the, the addict person box that they keep the idea of somebody who's got that kind of problem in. But yeah. we know that's not true. So. I would encourage everybody to at least kind of, you know, spend, I don't know, a minute, go online, look at, uh, look at what you can do and, uh, get it a lot. If you can, uh, even if you check out this app, actually, I think it's got information for how to get uh, naloxone kits for your business, how to get a naloxone yep. kit sent to you. Um, so yeah, lots of information there. The other thought I was just having Nathan was that we were talking right before we started to record about, you know, is, is the fact that it requires a cell phone with data and that can download apps and how much of a barrier is that? And, and we don't know how much of the population has, has, uh, has a cell phone and how much of the population of the um, people experiencing homelessness, how many of, of them have cell phones? Presumably some do, presumably some don't. But I, I wonder if there's a, a could be an ability and, and for any of our, listeners who are <clears throat> of an engineering mindset or something like that. Is there a way to, that it could be like a, you know, the lifelines or life alert that you see, um, you know, seniors wearing at home where you could hit a button or where it could be just like a, a little thing you wear around your neck where you hit it like, like the app where, you know, you take your dose and you press start. And if you haven't canceled it in a minute, it, it would, trigger a call to EHS. I wonder if that could be simplified out of an app on a, on a smartphone into just like a little, um, little disc that you wear around your neck. It should be able to, because you don't need data for an emergency call. No. Um, and I don't know, like, remember back in the nineties, we used to have pagers and (laughs) (laughs) that technology is, uh, pretty straightforward, very cheap and probably tiny at this point. So you'd think you could, um, you could set up something like that just based on, uh, like, uh, the, the life alert system for seniors. Like yeah. Why, why can't you do that? Um, press the thing, you know, press a button, take your dose, and then it's going to go off again. Same as this. If you don't hit it again, same story. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Um, because I'm, I don't see like you would expect with the number of people that are using drugs in this province. Uh, well, it's the number of people using drugs all over the world at any given time, but the, but the number of people in danger from toxic drugs uh, is higher than it's ever been before in this yeah. province anyway. So you'd think there'd be more people that have downloaded this, but it could be that people aren't aware of the good, uh, good Samaritan act either. Right. And, uh, if you're not aware of that act, it, it's basically something that they came out with a while ago. I think it was earlier on in the, in the drug crisis. And, uh, it was because people were dying because they were afraid of police showing up and, and, uh, you know, possession charges and stuff like that. So they passed an act called the Good Samaritan Act that prevents you from any legal repercussions associated with a medical emergency mm-hmm. secondary to drug use. So, you know, it's, it's good to know because I, I think there's probably lots of young people out there who, you know, would be hesitant to, to make that call, especially, yeah. well, even... I've seen young people nearly die because they didn't want their parents to find out, let alone the police. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, you, you do have to put in the information here, like your, your, there is an obvious compromise to privacy just by virtue of the fact that if you don't, um, don't hit cancel on the, 
on the timer that EHS is going to be called. But to me, I don't think that should be a should be a, a barrier to people using it. Well, it's a triage thing, right? I mean, yeah. Jesus, here, today. like we, I mean, we're supposed to be decriminalized now. As of, uh, I, I, we'll have to take a look at the date, but by the end of this month, decrim is supposed to be here in BC. And uh, I'm hearing some thing. Uh, I haven't looked into it closely enough to uh, to speak on it extensively, and I, I hope that it all works out. But if if we do have real decrim of uh, all possession of uh, small quantities of drugs across the board, then it shouldn't be a problem anyways. But yeah. Unless, of course, you're sitting there with five kilos of cocaine or whatever, but yeah. I don't know if the Good Samaritan Act would protect you then. No. <laughs> it should, though. Well, this is this is good. I, I think it's a step in, in, in the right direction. It doesn't cover all of the needed bases by any means, but it is a piece. And I and you know, I don't want to knock it for for the um I don't want to knock it for the fact that it doesn't cover all of the bases that we need in our province, but it is a good, it is a good step. And if it's something that's, if it saved 43 lives already, that's, that's quite remarkable. That's mm-hmm. 43, um, 43 people with, with loved ones and with potential and with all these other things going on. And, and as we've discussed, like the massive ripple effect of a loss like that. Um, so that's good on them for putting something like this out. Yeah, absolutely. If it saved one life, it was worth putting together. Yeah.